Hello and welcome to Breaking Geek Radio, the podcast, the premier flagship and international podcast of our online. I forgot this is a video podcast. I'm like picking it. <laughs> it's kind of weird. I'm like, all right, video. How's it going, guys? We got the Latastic Four here uh, talking about <gasps> some stuff and things. It's been a while. It's been yeah. a while, right? It's been, it's been probably like what? A, I feel like we probably only come together maybe ten times a year. As so far as is we need like an Avengers level threat to come back. Yeah. Okay. And the Avengers level <laughs> threat apparently is Top Gun. It's Top Gun. It is. Top Gun. Fucking Maverick. We gotta Woo! take it down. We gotta take this short son of a bitch down. We can do it. We can do it. <laughs> But in addition to talking about Star Wars Maverick, find out why that's the case later, uh, we've got a bunch of news and trailers to talk about. So let's get to it. We're going to do it in a slightly different order today. We're going to shake it out, shake it out, baby. Shake it out. So we, we're going to start with news first. And of course, the first news story that we're going to talk about is the same news story that everyone is talking about, but we're going to talk about it in a slightly different context. So in the wake of the shooting in Texas, we've got some news that's related to Stranger Things. So the new season of Stranger Things is airing now with a warning in front of the first episode. And apparently it's because the producers and creators thought that the shooting in Ebolde would elicit some type of feelings related to the first episode, even though this episode was shot over a year ago. So the warning card that's going to premiere in front of Stranger Things, which airs today, uh, as of this recording is, we filmed this season of Stranger Things a year ago, but given the recent tragic shooting at a school in Texas, viewers may find the opening scene of episode one distressing. Mm -hmm. We are deeply saddened by the unspeakable violence and our hearts go out to every family mourning a loved one. What I find interesting about that is this is something that's only airing in the United States, mm. uh, nowhere else. So, Nick, I know that you had an opportunity to watch Stranger Things. Already? Um, Jesus. Just it's the first episode, but I was yeah, up for like he, three years. He inexplicably chose to watch Stranger Things instead of Obi-Wan. Like, I, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> but given what you saw of this episode, do you think that that was warranted without going into spoilers? I think it's unnecessary to have the warning. There's violence in the scene, but it's not related at all to the same type of violence as uh, the shooting. Like It's obviously very graphic and stuff like Stranger Things can be because it's a streaming service and they can do whatever they want, but it's just violence. In the case of that, I feel like they could do anyone should put that warning even in front of Top Gun. Is it violence against school age kids? No. Wow. Well, Yes, but it's not. I don't know. It's what is maybe that that's mean? why yes they no? put it. It's a yes or no question. It's a yes, but I don't want to say too much. So, so to, okay. So here, oh, let me all right, let me direct you a little bit better. The kids might not necessarily get shot, but are there dead children at the beginning of this episode? Yes, which is why I didn't okay, think of it. Go. So I think that, at least in my opinion, without having seen it, I think that that's the rationale. Okay, I, so I was expecting that, a school shooting. In the episode, but there was. <laughs> I don't think it necessarily has to be a one to one. Um, like, this is one that I don't necessarily agree with, but I've seen people complain about the Matrix Resurrections. There were people jumping out of buildings during the Matrix Resurrections, and people were like, that reminded me of 9 11. It's like, I guess, but there are some people out there who feel that way. This seems a little bit more related, um, yeah. given that it's occurring in the same week. So, yeah. again, not having seen it. I mean, then again, it happens fucking every week here in the States. So, like, may as well just make that a permanent uh, warning on everything with, with heart, with children in danger, children in jeopardy at this point. I'm actually being serious. I'm not being sarcastic. At this point, I'm like, may as well, because I have no problem with warnings at the front of series. Like, people complain yeah. about it. Who cares? It's yeah, a five-minute it title fine. card, and it warns people who could potentially, you know, have a moment where it takes them back to something really traumatic. No problem with that. Considering how frequently it happens in the States, put it in front of everything where it has children in jeopardy. I don't care. Yeah. Any thoughts and feelings, thoughts and prayers about any of oh, God damn it. the States with regard to the, the title card? Because you're not even going to see it, right? You're going to completely miss out on it. Yeah, I think it's... I, I, 
with the sad state of affairs in this particular area in the US at the moment, I'm a jammer on this one. I think if it's a five second card that comes up before any show that's got any kind of violence whatsoever, then so what? You know, it's, it's going to get skipped over anyway, sadly. Sad thing is that you guys feel the need to have it in the first place. But yeah, wouldn't make much of a difference if you had it in front of everything, unfortunately. I feel like this is a strange connection, but I feel like Apple TV Plus, and maybe you can attest to this, Nick, or anyone else who's watched it. I feel like every show seems to have a, a seizure warning at the beginning now, or at least a few of them randomly do, even for episodes yeah. that don't have anything, you know, that I it. identify as like flashy. Flashing lights. Yeah. yeah it just says, it says somebody had flashing lights. And then I was like, okay. And I was waiting for it. Never happened. Didn't see a flashing light in the whole episode. Waiting to have a seizure? No, I was waiting for to see a flashing light where I can go, oh, that's why they put the warning in there. But I didn't see anything from like maybe they, none of maybe none of We Crashed, none of Severance, none of Morning Show, the new season. I think those all have, the current seasons have uh, flash warnings at the beginning. Or, that's the, the warning at all. Right, that it would be safe and safe. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't care. Put it all on there. It's like put there as long as it's, but then again, I want to make sure, put it when it's relevant, at least somewhat relevant, not just put it in everything. Because you don't want people to like avoiding everything <laughs> yeah. if it's not relevant. I'm curious how that works, though, in terms of story, right? I get a, I get a warning at the top of an episode. Does that mean I skip the episode? Does that mean I skip the first five minutes? I think that that's kind of the interesting thing as a viewer. If I was the type to be triggered by a kind of thing, what, what do I do? Do I just skip the whole thing? Do I not watch it? And that, that I mean, that's a, that's a personal choice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. I, I guess I'm trying to figure out, like, what are they telling me not to watch? Are they telling me to skip the entire episode? Are they telling me not to watch the first five, 10 minutes? Like that, I guess the logistics of what does that mean is kind of interesting. That um, being said, uh, the opening scene is, I assume, of only watch one episode is going to be incredibly important going forward. Yeah. As far as like, yeah, don't watch the series at all if you're going to skip the first five minutes. Interesting. But we'll see. We'll see. I'm only one episode in. It's like skipping the first five minutes of Madoka Magica and for some reason not including it in the, in the movie version of the series. Like, I don't understand why you would do that. Yes, Jammer, those are 100% the same thing. <laughs> I agree with you. You guys ready to move on to something less depressing but equally frightening? Yes. All right. We're going to the yes. Hunter Wood where apparently Pooh oh, Bear is stabbing motherfuckers. Um, so Winnie the Pooh has entered the public domain and the movie that we're getting from it is Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. And this is going to be, a, this is a story about so uh, Pooh Bear apparently becoming a slasher and serial killer. The question I actually have for you guys wasn't about this project. Well, we don't know a lot about it. We've seen some stills, things of that nature. I guess what I wanted to know from you all is what character in the public domain would you want to see a great reboot? Uh, Steamboat Willie, who's entering Public yeah, domain yeah. In I've like actually a week or two. I've been thinking yeah. about that. Or a month or two. If, if we're going to see a bunch of like an onslaught of like Steamboat Willie novels or like yeah. Steamboat Willie other things <laughs> pop up randomly, the steampunk oh, possibilities are, are limitless. There, steampunk Willie. <laughs> steampunk Willie. Oh yeah, but but then again, <laughs> you, you have you got to be careful because you have the the danger of of moving into epic Mickey territory to which they could nail you. So you don't want to. You just be careful, folks. Is that be careful if you with go to Tron World? Is that is that what you mean? No, I mean, fan. Go if you go like sort of fantasy stuff, and like there's a fantasy crossover with steampunk. There's just something there. Just be, just be careful. careful. Don't don't have him. You know, have a specific. I didn't play the game. Does he have a brush? Is that right in that yeah, game? Yeah. Don't have him wield a brush. Be careful there, folks. No brushes allowed in this Mickey. <laughs> Only helms. Only helms up in this bitch. Okay. Danny, is there a public domain character that you would like to see a gritty reboot of? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I can't. Oh, the, the opportunities for the jokes when you were talking about steampunk willies, don't put a brush up him, and oh, fuck. I'm almost in tears. Tears of the innuendo jokes that I could say from all of that. I'm sorry. I actually lost see, track now, of the conversation. Now I'm afraid to see what mine was because it was going to be uh, Bugs Bunny. But, you know, 
I don't know what he's going to do with that carrot. So we can move on. <laughs> <laughs> In, in English, Willy means cock prick anyway. So the fact that you, you, you're steampunking a Willy and a cock, I, there's so much there. I, I mean, there no. you go. You found you found the porn parody. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm a dick. Yeah. What was it? I mean, it's been a while. It's been a while. Bless you. So wait, up to this point, would they have not been allowed to make a porn parody of it? They would have been able to do that, right? Because it's a parody. Yeah, I think parody. You're allowed parody would have been okay, but, but it's still dicey because it's Disney. But everyone makes that Mickey Mouse joke about how he's a tyrant and shit, like and how he's like he's an overlord, corporate overlord. So that's done to death without any real problem. So yeah, especially in something like South Park. Yeah, like South they actually Park have him or, as a character. Yeah, but it's I mean, like a parody, and he's not drawn exactly. Right. As, I mean, it's you well, know you anyone can do a Mickey Mouse like that, like a character in a show where he's like. You know, South Park style. But I mean, what's where's the line? So yeah. the line is, it's where you're made. So porn is not within the scope of parody. Parody is you have to be making some sort of commentary. You have what to if you make something like? What if you what if you make a commentary, but then also there's sex? I think that they could probably still. I don't know. I'd have to. See, you'd have to know the specific facts, right? So you're you're trying to layer it on top when it comes to parody, it has to have some sort of criticism or commentary about the thing. So when we're talking about Mickey as a corporate overlord, they're like squarely within what it means to be a parody. Mm. Right? When he comes, he's supposed <laughs> to be like, oh, hello, like super nice Mickey Mouse. It's like, now fuck you guys, right? You're, you're going to do what I say you do. And they had yeah. Pooh Bear in that too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, do they? Yeah. I, I know that avoid the red shirt. Avoid the red shirt with Pooh Bear and you're probably and the O bothers probably. I don't know if he says that in the books, but avoid at least the shirt and you're probably on the right track. Right. If you have a so, naked Pooh Bear. So naked Pooh Bear. Yeah. It's kind of funny. It reminds me of a uh, Rescue Rangers where somebody said they don't wear pants. Like, yeah, we know. <laughs> I, I didn't I didn't watch Rescue Rangers. Was that good? Fucking hilarious. I really? liked so it a if lot. You, if you liked Roger Rabbit, this is like so the DuckTales reboot. Same comedic vein. Um, Damn, that's really like, good. Yeah, if you like um, Roger Rabbit, this feels like it could be a sequel to Roger Rabbit, like a an anthology style sequel. Because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not going to ruin it. There are elements in there you're like that, that you're totally doing the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood thing with this movie, even as it relates just to Roger Rabbit. Awesome. So, Love it, that. That's my weekend movie. And then again, I also might see the Bob's Burgers movie. So we'll see. Okay. You guys ready to move on without uh, Dandy's input on what public domain character he wants to see? Yeah. All right. So apparently Daredevil will return. We've <gasps> got news. Somebody gasp. I guess <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was a faux gasp. It was like, oh. Okay. <laughs> so Disney Plus is rebooting uh, Matt Murdock's show. We've got uh, coming from who wrote this? Variety. A new Daredevil series is moving forward at Disney Plus with Variety having exclusively learned from sources that Matt Corman and Chris Ford are attached to write and executive produce. These are the folks from the original. Um, uh, I'm sorry, they came from Covert Affairs. And the- I was about to say, Stephen S. Tonight was the original, yeah. right? Yeah. Totally screwed my head up. Um, so the only knock in their armor is the fact that they did a CW show called Containment. We'll see what that means. Um, the question I have for you all is one, there is an unconfirmed rumor that Jessica Jones is also coming back. Is that something that you would like to see? In addition to that, um, how sanitized do you think that they're going to have to make one or both of these characters to fit it on Disney Plus? Or are they just going to hide it behind profiles and pens? Um, Sorry, Jones, who was the second one coming back? Sorry, Nick, one, one second. Who potentially was the Jessica one coming Jones. Back? Jessica Jones. Christine right, Leder. okay. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, Nick. Sorry, buddy. I, oh, I didn't no hear problem. what Jones did. Sorry, buddy. Um, Kyle and I discussed this on Marvel Multiverse Mayhem, which you should all check out. Um, Jessica Jones is like the only one I don't want back. For some Fuck reason. you. Jessica Jones had a great first season. Yeah, you want Finn Jones? Over just well, I, I want heroes for hire. I don't want him to have his own show. Okay. And you can recast him. It's the multiverse. No one gives a shit. Just recast. 
What's his face? Um, and what was the second part of the question? Was that it? How pretty. What was that? Yes, the, 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 I so alluded to it. Oh. We're still on pretty reboots. So coming from the public domain, we're moving into Marvel. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't think you have to do a lot to make it more sanitized. You have to remove the blood. Why? By, and you can't curse. Because blood is the difference between a PG-13 and an R. No, no, no. But I'm asking if they have the, uns- the uncensored versions of these on the 18 plus profiles. But now that it's the MCU, I don't think they're going to keep him separate. I think they're going to make him PG-13 friendly. And, uh, and I don't think that would be very difficult to do. I mean, even looking at the violence in Moon Knight, you do get a, some blood. Um, it will be sanitized a little bit. But I, I think they, as long as there is good creators and writers, which I, I doubt it'll ever be as good as the original series, um, it's I, th- I think it'll work, but he has doubts. Hmm. Danny, yeah, sadly, I, I think they will. Um, what's the word we're using? Sanitize, sanitize. it. I think they will, uh, yeah, sanitize it a little bit. I personally hope not, and it's not because I'm uh, uh, I need to see blood and violence for me to even be able to enjoy a show. I just think it. Fits well with the character and how it works, and we have been blessed with what I thought was was a great set of seasons from Dead, or even the weaker seasons was still much better than uh, than Iron Fist. Uh, I wasn't too much of a huge fan of Jessica Jones, I have to be honest. So I'm not that fussed if she doesn't come back. Um, maybe it'll be better if they bring her back. So I'm with Jam on that. We don't know. The writers could be could take her up a notch and make it a little bit better. But um, I sadly think it will be sanitized. I hope it's not. Um, but I wait and see on these. Uh, I just hope it's not not fast about Jessica Jones, though, unfortunately. Yeah, I, it's funny because as I think back about what I liked about Jessica Jones, it was her interactions with David Tennant, the Purple Man. Absolutely. That is what made that first season and then the rest of it was just shit. Like, it, I think the second season was so bad that I oh, I, I, I didn't finish. I didn't finish the last episode of the second season. Yeah. I just legit wow. stopped watching. It yeah, wasn't like out of a- it wasn't out of anger. It was just like I just forgot about it. I was just like, eh, I don't feel like watching it. And then eventually, years pass, and I still haven't watched it. I was angry at how stupid it was because I hate feeling like it's that the thing that I keep going back to that Al Pacino from Heat. Don't waste my motherfucking time. And that's how I felt. <laughs> I love how you take everything so personally. You're like, this is a slight against me and my time. How dare you? Time is the only resource that I have that I can never get back, right? I stop deep. with your philosophy. That <gasps> wasn't deep. It's not that wasn't deep. deep. It's true. Stop, stop with your shit. Stop with your faux deep bull. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> I, I already think- had shanks. I'm going to get shirt, faux deep bull. <laughs> is that food? Is that something I can get at a Vietnamese restaurant? <laughs> 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 anyway, Spicy. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give my opinion. I didn't ask it. I don't think it's gonna be sanitized. Really? I think I think they're gonna go all in on this R-rated world, and that will leave the door open for some Deadpool action. Not necessarily in these shows, but it'll at least sort of open up things for them because they've already had these multiple seasons of these shows available on Disney Plus. I don't see the value in restricting it. I just don't Wait, see it. You mean not restricting it? No, I don't see the value in them restricting it. Are being restricted? Sanitizing it. I don't see the value in sanitizing it when you already have these IPs associated with blood and sex. You know? <laughs> and if Jessica Jones is truly coming back, her entire story is based on a very just R-rated idea about... Uh, fucking movie. sexual abuse and sexual violence and all that. And that's like inherent in the character. That's like the one show you can't even, I feel like you can't really tell effectively without going R just because of the nature, the traumatic nature of it. Whereas everything else is just punchy, punchy, which is right. fine. We can, we can get rid of the blood on that. Uh, I just don't think if you're bringing her back, unless you're really taking what is core to the character that. Kevin Feige will say yes. Let's let's water that down. I don't see him doing that for that character, especially 
considering that character was already built on the foundation of that in previous seasons and Christian Rich coming back, assuming of course she is coming back and that they're continuing the continuity. Right. And so just to be clear, of these stories, the daredevil story is that's happening. The Kristen Ritter thing is rumor. So we don't even know that that's for sure happening. Well, first of all, Jammer, I do think they're variants. Um, I don't think we're seeing the universe they came from. Kyle's okay. fingering this. Kyle. <laughs> oh my good. Oh my goodness. Uh just want to say uh Hollywood reporter uh reported in in the uh article we we combine it with the uh variety stuff over on on LR, lrmonline.com um but Hollywood reporter says that uh um It'll be uh, notable for being the first of the Netflix Marvel shows, and this is a quote, to get a new but continued series. Oh. So sources tell The Hollywood Reporter. However, I still feel like Nick does. I think it's more than likely some miscommunications or some crossed wires here and that it's likely going to be uh, variants. But that is from from Hollywood Reporter and their, well, THR. Mm. Got wait. Yeah, continue. Continue could just mean a continuing uh, Daredevil. The show is continuing, not right. necessarily uh, a the canon. Blood and guts. Yeah. Well, it can still be canon, yeah. right? And you just don't. Yeah. It's just not as violent. So both of those yeah. things can be true. It'll be interesting. We'll have to wait and see. Um, I'm looking forward to getting Daredevil back. Either way. Same. Yep. So. Yeah. Ready to see it? I, 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 I would prefer to see less grandstanding in future lawyer scenes. Please, come on, Matt, get your shit it's together. It's what we do. It's it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna stand up for the blind lawyer. It's the only lawyer. All right. Fuck off. That's what we do. You guys, ready to move on? Yeah. All right. So we got a bunch of trailers, um, like lots and lots of trailers. And we're going to start with, let's start with the one that's near and dear to my heart. Let's talk about Holy Well. I'm probably messing up the word for Kyle. I'm sorry. Um, I'm, I'm going to get the finger. I'm going to get a finger again. Um, <laughs> he's steamboat. steamboat Is he sanitizing you? his hands? He's doing a lot of fingering. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, guys. <laughs> yeah, we got even bought flowers. Let me see. Stop I'm calling him out. Right. Right. Stop I'm calling him right. out. I'm going to do it right. What, what's the, okay, beast. <laughs> Here's, here's what we're going to do. So I th- here's the order that I sent to him, and I'm going to do it right. So we got two Idris Elba trailers. One of them is... Did you just uh, switch it up from Willow to Idris Elba? I did. Didn't you hear what I said? I heard what you said. I just don't like that you did it. No, no. I'm going I'm to help him out. Like, we got a show. <laughs> we got, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do the right thing. All right. Um, we've got two Idris Elba trailers. One of them is 3,000 Years of Longing, and the other one is Beast. In one of the trailers, Idris Elba is a genie granting wishes to a lovelorn uh, Tilda Swinton. And in the other one, he's punching the fuck out of lions. And so I guess the question <laughs> that I wanted to ask you guys after you saw the trailers, because we all watched the trailers, um, which one do you want to see first? Like, which is the one that gets you excited about reviewing for the podcast? Uh, I'll go first, like this entire show, don't you? You guys worry um i actually did you post the other one i didn't see the other one the, i saw yeah, beast thousand years of longing yeah i saw beast and it looks like the ending i mean it looks like it might be a little bit like the gray just just like the ending everyone's like it's gonna be a wolf fight the third trailer in there oh so my bad in my hack order and what i posted we got mission impossible we've got four and we've got three thousand years well, I'm sorry that I missed that one, but Beast does look awesome. Especially, I love Sharp Low Copley. So um, I've seen him in two things this week. Watch the other one. No, I'm sorry, but <laughs> I think Beast looks pretty cool, even though I can't answer your. So yeah, that's my answer. I'll see that one first because I haven't even seen the trailer for the other one. <laughs> <laughs> and I like the premise of Beast more after you tell the other description. This one just looks like a crazy like. Almost predator esque like action film. Okay, predator esque. Interesting. Is this isn't me choosing, but I do like that. Three thousand years is directed by George Miller, so that's the thing. Yeah, me too. Like, it also me. looks fucking weird. It looks like an A twenty four picture. Yeah, it does, right? 
It was when George, yeah. when I saw the George Miller come up, that was when it really got my attention on the trailer. And then when I saw the trailer, I'm, 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 I'm sold on this mad as a sack of spaniel shit. This one, this, this look, that looks a lot of fun. I haven't seen the trailer for Beast, but I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty, pretty confident it's not going to make me. Uh, it's, it's not going to be as good as this one. That uh, <laughs> uh, was it, three thousand years, three hundred years long in three, three million three years long in whatever it Love is, you, a long thousand, time long in. It really does look good. This one, this one had me. Yeah, I'm I'm watching that on opening day. That looks like a lot of fucking fun. Okay, um, Jeremy, you jumped in there. So was your pick also three thousand years? Yeah, I think so. I mean, Beast looks really good. At first, I thought that maybe he was channeling The Rock and the type of movies that he was going to do. Mm. I, I got I got some like San Andreas type vibes from this at first, but then it got more horror esque. And I was like, oh, The Rock would never be in anything remotely scary. Come on. He's too, <laughs> he's too happy. Yeah. Um, so, but it, it does look interesting. It looks entertaining. Um, whether or not I'll be able to see it, we'll see. Because I see most movies, you know, with my wife. And she just does not like horror. The Rock Getting was her... in Doom. Sorry? The Rock was in Doom. Early in his career. But that was it's like, old that rock. was Old Rock. Old Rock. Old Rock. Old rock. Back when he was The Rock no, and not, not Dwayne that, Johnson. Not about that new Old Rock. Yeah, Scorp- 3,000 years of longing. So, so young old rock, not new old rock. <laughs> young old rock. Yeah, no. Yes. Wait. Young new rock. Wait, old, I don't know what the fuck I'm about. <laughs> I don't even know what's happening. Don't overthink 3, 000, it. 3,000 years of longing looks really good. It looks like really just sort of off the wall, crazy. Um, it looks like the type of movie I want to watch. Like, I want to watch a film today. Let's watch that. It looks you weird. You just put it in Kyle's hands because he posted what? this trailer in the Hoity Toity channel on Discord, which everyone I can should see jump that. in on. Yeah. yeah it, like, he specifically called you out. Oh, no, I don't think he called you out for that. No, because I would have got a notification on my phone yeah, if he did, yeah, unless you're right, you're right. he didn't tag me. But he, he definitely could... posted in Hoity Toity. And that's Shit. your room. I don't like that. You Why am I associated with Hoity Toity again? <laughs> because we can't publicly shame you. Because you say shit like you just said. Understood. Yeah, you changed <laughs> I want to watch the word film. to film. I want to watch yeah. the film. No, 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 I said... I said I, I want will, to watch a film. I'll when I want to watch a film, I'll watch that, and we'll see if I get a chance to do that. But both look when great. When I want to watch a movie, I'll watch the other thing. Because <laughs> yeah, I, I actually right. defended the movie. I was like, "No, that's not who he's waiting." And then you just like fucked it up again. So we're moving on. Now. <laughs> you fuck my shit. Up. <laughs> anyway, I'm picking the same too, but we're moving on. So we're going to be talking about the next trailer on the list. The next trailer on the list is willow see this is the correct word uh this one's near and dear to my heart if you ask my parents what movie like i fucking wore the VHL, vhs out on it's this one um i love willow growing up i love the music i love the story uh it was a lot of fun and so we are getting a disney plus series premiering in august that takes place 20 years after the original we're getting warwick davis back as the titular willow and it looks interesting, it looks fun, and it's kind of interesting to me. I didn't look this up before the thought occurred to me. This is going to beat Lord of the Rings to the punch, right? Mm. Ah, I don't know, is it? I think so. Lord of the Rings is September. Yeah. So no, it's not. This is streaming November 30th, so Lord of the Rings will beat it. November? I thought it was August. It says November 30th on the trailer. Oh. You look I'm a fool that. right now. You're giving I him extra months to wait. <laughs> don't give me hope. That's annoying. I can't believe it. I, I, I took away hope, if yeah, anything. Right. Took away hope. Don't give me hope. Don't take away hope. You took away hope. Um, so, yeah, that'll be interesting. We've got two Lord of the Rings esque shows premiering right around the time of each other. Um, I'm looking forward to this, though. Uh, I'm hoping that Disney does this right. The other thing that I think is interesting that I'm looking forward to, Ron Howard is back producing this one. Mm. So, that gives me hope for the behind the scenes aspect of it. Yeah. Do you guys have any affinity for Willow? Are you looking forward to? Let's yeah, I, I remember Willow. I remember watching it on the on the big screen when I was younger. And much like you, Jones, it holds a, it holds a bit of a special place because of that, those kind of memories that it triggers. Um, and it's interesting because tonight when I when I got back to the house, my nephews were were choosing a film to watch. And I said, have you because I watched it on a, on the iPad, the trailer. And I said, have you boys seen Willow yet? And I said, no, what's that? And my brother's and we played the trailer from the original Willow film. And it was in the, uh, you guys help me out. It wasn't in widescreen. Yeah. It was in oh, it was a full screen. <laughs> Gross. So, yeah, I know. And you remember, well, you might, 
the trailers back then, back in the day, were sure. very different than they are now. And it was it was really nostalgic. But then I'm looking at the yeah, special effects, but seeing the young lost the lamp, left it's the lamp. exactly, yeah. It's like and Lucas the young Bell Bell invites and... you to a magical <laughs> yeah. world. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the same voiceover, um, but it did it even easy. that spark memories. And I was watching the boys like, are they going to think this looks like absolute cheap load of shit, or are they actually going to be quite excited about it? And unfortunately, it was very much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, Uncle Dan, yeah. why are we watching this shit? When, when, when does the when does Ant Man appear? When does when does uh, the superhero appear? appear? <laughs> <laughs> He's in so every shot. He's just small. It's like, where does this yeah. fall into the MCU? Tell us, Uncle <laughs> Danny. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Uncle the best Dan, I apparently. could do was was say. He's been in Star Wars a lot. That guy there, he's been in Star Wars, and he's been in Harry Potter a lot as well. Just trying to remind him that, obviously, of uh, Warwick Davis. Um, it didn't dampen didn't my it, excitement it. for the new show. Um, I, I'm excited for the new show, but m- mostly not because of how the trailer was, though. I didn't. I wasn't really excited by the trailer. More about who was in it and with Ron Howard producing as well. The trailer itself didn't make me like really can't wait to watch this but seeing who was involved gives me a bit more confidence that i will enjoy it when it's released in august november or whenever november. whenever we oh. decide yeah but uh, but the original film still holds a place near and dear uh, um uh, for, for lots of reasons least of all for the dogs dressed up as warthogs do you remember that jonesy i do the makeup do. on the dogs and, and they're just mauling the kitten. shit out of people it was amazing that's it, yeah. One wonderful practical special effects, right back up there with the quality of Caravan of Courage. It was. Oh God! You know what, <laughs> so you see, like the trailer. You know what the trailer did for me was like right at the end. It got me in the feels. It was the music. So the James Horner swell, like right at the end with the uh, yeah with the music with the willow like, theme. Yeah, yeah, I'm in. I'm in. So Things I have important. I have negative association with Willow. I never watched it growing up. And I used to work at a, essentially a, a, what's it called? What the fuck's it called? What, GameStop back in high oh. school for a hot minute. I was going to say a blockbuster video the way you're struggling there. <laughs> no, no, no. Cause I was trying to remember what it's called. No, because it wasn't actually, it wasn't a GameStop, but it was something that was later absorbed by GameStop. EB Games. No, it was a different one. Bandages? Um, no, not, no. no. It was a software, et cetera. I but, was about to say, what, what? Bottom feeding shit. Did you work at? <laughs> we literally made. It like, oh. <laughs> I was like, but I, okay, I miss at the mall that you could possibly. Work? But you know, we we used to always take in a bunch of used uh, games and DVDs and stuff. And this there is this guy. We had like this beard. He was really pale. He had long hair, and he walked in flip flops. And his nails were like super long and gross. And he would always come in with this Gandalf, right? Uh, We used to always walk in with a stack of DVDs. And I always remember he's brought in multiple copies of Willow. And I was just like, what the fuck is this? What is this? And it had this sort of cheesy image on it with a smiling Warwick Davis. Like, I think he was holding up a staff or Chris. I don't know what he was holding up, but just smiling and stuff. And I was like, this looks stupid. Uh, and, you know, because I was in high school and anything that wasn't dark and gritty was stupid back in the day. So it's like, and I hadn't been exposed to it as a kid, Willow. Uh, and so I knew, you know, later on, I would come to learn that, oh, it's actually beloved. Supposedly it's really good, but I actually just haven't gotten around to watching it. And honestly, part of it that doesn't want me to go back and watch it is like, I don't know, fantasy in the 80s kind of sucked a lot of times. And it's just hard for me to get on board with it uh with like the world and stuff and i'm like it's going to be really just hard to watch it's going to be done in a specific way that i just don't like and then this trailer unlike danny and unlike jonesy completely sold me because it cool. looks like they put in some they, they look like they put Wait, in i didn't say it didn't sell me i said the thing that like got me like okay got me. well danny said yeah. it didn't sell him it, it yeah. sold me because it Good. looked fucking awesome it looked like they actually put a lot of effort into it that the world here is really just sort of rich and just expensive looking. So they're taking it seriously. And I'm like, all right, you know, maybe I will go back and revisit Willow um, because this looks really great. And it looks like a lot of fun to watch. And I'm getting way better vibes than I got from Dark Crystal. And I'm hoping the show is better because Dark Crystal was boring as shit. The Dark Crystal yeah, well, Rise of Resistance, whatever that was called. That was uh, boring. And I hope this is better than that. 
I uh, saw Willow as a child once. I don't remember anything about it. Except, is it wasn't Val Kilmer in it? Yeah. Yep. So that's the only thing I remember. Um, so the trailer and I'm not I, I used to be a bit like around the time of Lord of the Rings. I was a big fantasy guy, but I don't really. It's probably one of my least favorite genres now. So wait, what is I'll probably fantasy. fantasy like like not like Star Wars fantasy, but like, you but know, like, like sword magic. Sorcery. And yeah, exactly. Except for Jedi also are basically wizards, but no, but it's, it's I won't different. get too deep into that. No, um, yeah, no, it is. But he doesn't like the aesthetic of like men in robes and shit and tunics and just walking around with swords. OK, yeah. I just described Star Wars, didn't yeah, I? Shut I was, up. No, but just, I, I, did you look at my face before you realized I'm like, wait, which no. argument are you making again? No, but I'm talking about. It's different. It's different in terms of the feel and aesthetic. It's different. The themes and some of like the surface level things might be similar, but the way like it feels and the production value, totally different. It's sci-fi fantasy. No, it's not it's sci-fantasy. like wizards fantasy. It's sci-fantasy, fantasy, not just fantasy. I get you, Nick. Fuck okay. Jonesy. Yeah. Um, Please. I, I will probably <laughs> rewatch the first one and watch this, even though the trailer did nothing for me, especially in a week of great trailers. I watched it just for the podcast and I was like, okay, the final shot reminded me of the Eternals slash the just just while they're all like lined up in colorful costumes looking like outward. And that's also the image they use on YouTube. Not to say this sh- show looks at all like Eternals, but I was like, yeah, I don't even remember what happened in the trailer, but mm-hmm. I did watch it. Okay. Wait, Nick, <laughs> did you see a week of great trailers? A week of great trailers. Oh, I shit. Say, I, did say great trailers. I did say great. I mean, you did say great trailers. Nice. At least that's what I heard. So Netflix dropped another very specific <laughs> looking trailer. What's just happened? The look on your face made me laugh. Well, I was um, confused and I was like, what? And then I remembered, oh, wait, I get it now. And then you went to the Yeah, now. Then I got it. Um, so we got the Ryan Gosling star. Uh, the Gray Man, which also has one of the Chris's, one of our favorite Chris's. And this looks like the world of James Bond or Jason Bourne or any other JD spies out there. And I guess the question that I had for you guys wasn't necessarily about the trailer. It was about, I feel like this is Netflix's gambit in terms of raising prices, um, and potentially losing out on subscribers. This is what they're devoting all of their money to. Um, and to movies? And these movies like this, Red Notice, <sighs> Six Underground to some extent. And these are things that are franchises. So they're not just one-off movies. You've got some stuff where it very looks Oscar baby. Like this is the stuff we want to win. But then you also have very clear, like, these are franchises or potential franchises if enough people watch them. Do you think that it's worth it? Not necessarily including this film, but if this is the direction that they're going, do you think this works for them? I just remember I the Netflix we- story we did the other week where they're losing money, yet they're spending more money. Not anymore. Not spending more money anymore. They're cutting back (laughs) seemingly exclusively on animation. But, you know, they're cutting back. But, yeah, uh, we'll see. It doesn't sound like it's worked so far this year. And they've been doing, as they promised, in that one weird ad where everyone looks at the camera and is like, I'm on Netflix. Um, That... You yeah, haven't seen it where it's just it's an ad for almost like all their movies and like almost every character like breaks the fourth wall, including like uh, Ryan Gosling riding on the top of the vehicle. And he's like, he doesn't say on Netflix, but they'll say it's something. probably from this movie, huh? Yeah, yeah, that they, one is. So that what they do, Jonesy and that it's just a bunch of they integrate. They cut from like shots of like specific movies and they have the character kind of look to the camera and, and say, say something, say something. Yeah. I like the Noah Holmes yeah. part of that where she's like, hey, they're stealing my shtick. But uh um, um, that's cute. Yeah, that part was okay. The rest of it was terrible, it but it was fine. They had clips of it, wasn't that bad. Calm down. We're just looking at it. the camera thing it was like, this we is we got our first nice out shot, and that was that was yeah. cool. Yeah. But I, yeah, it doesn't sound like it's been working so far, but we'll see with movies like this where I was watching it and they're like from the Russo brothers. I'm like, oh, are they named brand now? And then it was like, yes. who directed this and this and this and this and has the same writer as those movies too, even though they don't advertise that. 
but and we'll see running with a shield being shot at. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's kind of, and you know, Chris Evans stash, which is better than I just need to shave. But um, every time I see it, I always want to like, not in a bad way. I just kind of want to, you want to oh. touch his tash? Yeah, you want to touch his stash? You want to steamboat Willie him? Which is the best part of the trailer, even though it's <laughs> off topic. Where he's like, it's like, I'm Lloyd or whatever. And it's like, yeah, I, ex- I expected that was you because of like the porn mustache or whatever. But um, <laughs> it was, well, yeah. Um, we'll see if it works with movies like this and movies that are established but came to Netflix, like Knives Out, is my answer. Because it does so- seem like it's been working so far. It's funny because I'm I'm split. I'm 50-50. I saw this trailer and I was like, I want to, I will not cancel Netflix because I know I want to see this. Mm, true. Cool. I enjoyed that. Um, there was one more that you mentioned just now. Um, oh, Knives Out. So oh, now Knives that out. they've purchased that. So those are three. But, but Knives Out is coming to theaters. 45 it days is, in advance. But I'm okay with that the flip I'll side of that is, we also have things like six underground and red notice which i haven't watched so this isn't a judgment on quality i'm just not interested Hold on. um and then you, there's one more um what was the jamie fox movie that we watched oh power project power or power it was very clearly obviously designed to be a franchise um, yeah and I'm it sucked not, it was boring I, it's fine like i don't i would not keep netflix to see the next in that franchise. No, yeah. So um, and they were going to do a sequel to uh Bright. Is that what it was called? The one yeah, with uh, that was one of the first. That got canned just because of uh Will Smith. No, I mean it got canned. That's the reason. It that's was also reason. it, it was also reason, delayed Nick. for many reasons. A that's the reason. Uh, Max, Max Landis. Max Landis. He got sexual accused of sexual assault after that. Um, or accused of something related sexual misconduct in some form or another. Also, the movie didn't wasn't very well received. I know, I know they announced it at least. It wasn't like we're thinking about like oh it could be a franchise. They announced the sequel, and then right. that I just remember the reading the article about Will Smith because he's kind of just in movie jail right now because Bad Boys Four and they mentioned Bright also were movies that got canceled because of the Oscar incident. I feel like Bright is that movie. That was like, oh yeah, us too. We- we also canceled. <laughs> we already canceled it because of the but... slap. Like, okay, yeah. With the bad boys one, I know that they were sending him um, pages, and then they stopped. Mm-hmm. With bright, I'm like, sure. They weren't working on it. That movie came out in like 2010 or some shit. Like, I was still on the other side of the planet. Yeah, yeah I was. Yeah. I was basically an infant when that first movie came out, and they still haven't made a sequel. So, Bright 2018 is when they announced Bright Two. Kyle said, so it sounds like it's been dead for a while. I mean, that's yeah. even two years before the pandemic. Literally, Netflix was just like, "Holy shit, we could actually announce that it's canceled and not lose face." <laughs> exactly. Do it quickly. Put out a press uh-huh, release. Face. Why? Because he slapped a face. Is that is that it? Okay. For the folks listening at home, you know, I'll uh, I'll give that to you. They can't all be winners, Jonesy. But I appreciate you going for the joke. You guys ready to move on? No. Yeah. I just, talk- can I? Can I just add yeah. to, to to that the the Netflix one, Jonesy? For yeah, me, this sorry, one was yes. the one film, the one film that they've released recently that actually thought they finally got it right or it looks like they finally got it right because of everything you guys have just been discussing about the possible franchises they've always fucked up these films it's always been a shit ton of money gone on the 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 on-screen talent but the writing and the direction and stuff has always been really really shitty six underground i can't even remember the name of the film with Charlize theron that one looking like that was going to be some sort of franchise oh uh, old guard old guard yeah that's it so there's been a few films where they've spent a hundred million dollars plus, or certainly a, a, a huge chunk of change, and these films have like pretty much been underwhelming at best. But this was Red one, Notice any good? No, no, I have skipped most of these watching. films. I- yeah, they, they're they're not worthy. They're not worthy. They're not worthy. <laughs> 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 Here's the thing that's really frustrating. 
Well, it's got right. talent in front of the camera and behind it, this one, the, with the Russo brothers and the writers, and obviously who you've just discussed is actually on the screen. And I'm thinking it might be just a little bit too late for them because now they've finally got something that's actually worth watching, but they've already been been hemorrhaging um, viewers and stuff already, right? Here's, but this one I'm actually quite pisses, excited about. Here's what pisses me off about that, and Gemma brought this up earlier. It's the fact that it's the animation that they've gone after, but it's the animation that has consistently brought me yeah. back to Netflix. So, like, I can rattle off Arcane, um, Gretzko, uh, Love, Death, and Robots, Bojack Horseman, which I'm pretty sure is an award-winning television yeah, it is program. excellent, yeah. Yeah, and it's so depressing, but good. You're like, oh, no. <laughs> Castlevania. No, no, no. I quite enjoyed Castlevania. Castle, for my, for my Castlevania. Uh, <laughs> while Pacific Rim isn't the, the greatest thing in the world, I watched the entire first season. I'm going to watch the next season. Um, so they just have show after show after show that's animated that I have burned through and enjoyed. While a bunch of these movies I've either skipped or watched and thought, meh. It's because yep. for me, they're, they're a bunch of uh, soulless explosions. Like they're really yeah. boring. And it's just, yep. all right. Like when I see Netflix and I see like thriller, this sort of uh, sweeping drone shots or helicopter shots, like along with that type of music with the sweeping shots, maybe across a landscape and then sort of cars going, and then an explosion yeah. to that star. <laughs> that's just, oh, that's going to be boring. That's what I think but every single time. Voltron, Kipo. Um, I don't watch this, but people, my friends love Big Mouth. I, they're just, Hilda, fucking amazing. And it's, it, it, it drives me insane that they're spending so much money on just crap movies. And yep. okay. the quality stuff that they do is what's going to suffer because of it. Yep, there's almost a billion. The films we've just listed must be set, feels like it's almost a billion dollars worth of of just average at best. The only other one I can think of, and I might even be, might not even been on Netflix, was the Chris Hem Chris Hemsworth one. Extra um, action, yeah. extraction, extraction. Which I, already they, I liked that a one. Trailer too for the what, sequel. It was okay. Ago, no? It was okay. But that was. But this is the best of the bunch, Jammer. Right? This yeah. Is, this is like this is okay. For the money they're spending on it. Um. So yeah, really disappointing. So. Yeah, if that's the best we can get, Jammer, then I suppose that's as good as going to go. But at least know, that one. So you know, I, I did like, I did is, like. That's also produced by the Russo brothers. So I'm like, you know oh, what? Shit. The best one, the best, <laughs> the best Netflix original movie, other than Enola Holmes, which we've talked about, which wasn't I, really an original movie, as we which discussed really wasn't a really week. original <laughs> one. But other than that, I think the best one so far was Project Adam, which I just watched like oh, last yeah. weekend. That, that was, was pretty fun. good. I, haven't I enjoyed seen that it. It was. It's worth watching. It's fun. It's good. It's fun. You would like it. Like if you watch the trailer, it, you're getting exactly that. That is exactly what you're getting. It will fill that that void that you're feeling. Like, oh, I feel like that. You're gonna get it, and you'll be happy, and Good. you'll move on with your life. But agreed. Like I would say, it it's still not like amazing, but it's really fun to watch and definitely worth your time. Yeah, yeah. but nowhere so near the massive included. budget of Six Underground and stuff like that, right? They haven't thrown so much money at it by the, by the looks of the trailer. It doesn't. It's not a big explosion thing, right? Or no, there is. Right? There, there is. There's good, yeah. There's a good amount of explosions in Project Adam. Yeah, and special effects. Say, like, it's it's sci-fi, like it's it's sci-fi right. futuristic shoot him up. Like, but the thing to me is, it's it also got me excited for the next Deadpool movie because I think Sean Levy directed mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. that, and so he's also directed. It's it's essentially Stranger Marvel. Things. Stranger Things meets sci-fi, or not sci-fi. Stranger Things meets Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's I mean, not his own yeah. genre, basically. Yeah, it really is. Like seriously, like The Rock. I was thinking about this when, we were, when I was watching Top Gun. Literally, The Rock, Ryan Reynolds. Who would have thought he'd be in the name in, in the mix? And Tom Cruise are like the three ones that I feel like dictate the type of movies that they're in. Can you think of anyone else? Uh, for a while, it was Will Smith. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember, yeah, sure. like Ryan Reynolds. I feel like used to be a punchline. Yeah. Uh, and that's crazy that he's literally like, to me, in my mind, it's like, like I said, one of the, the few stars in Hollywood who like dictates the full on style and tone of the movies that he stars in. It's insane. I mean, I'm happy for him, but it's insane. It's cool. To the same you know, point, you like buy a tele telecommunications company and you're golden. Or yeah, Mint Mobile or vodka mm -hmm. and sell it, make some money, make yeah. some goofy uh, ads based entirely around your personality. He bought a football team? 
A football team. He owns a football team. team. An actual Fo- football, football team. Soccer. With, uh, he owns the a soccer real, club. Real. A soccer team. Soccer, soccer club. I love how soccer. Danny says it making fun of us. But um, well, I lost my thoughts. So let's move on. <laughs> let's move on. Um, do we have another trailer? Oh, we've got, the, uh, we've got two more trailers. Yes, we do. Of course we do. Uh, do you forget who's on the podcast? He will fucking burn this podcast to the ground if you don't mention one of these trailers. <laughs> um, so Thor, Love and Thunder, this is the, the official trailer, like the real trailer. The one that we got before was the teaser trailer. We get a little bit more footage. We get actually a lot more footage. Um, the thing that's important that I think is um, Christian Bale's character. So we finally get a shot of the God Butcher and that's the thing that I wanted to ask you guys about. I would have been perfectly happy walking into this movie, not even seeing him or seeing anything about what he looked like. But given that we now see that, um, to make you more or less excited for Thor 4. Same. 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 Didn't I agree. Increase same. Increase or decrease the excitement. I mean, I, yeah, I was, I was, I'm here for the, the Taika Waititi quirk. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, that's what we're here for at this point. The the over the top colors and ridiculous alien shit. That's what we're all here for, or that's what I'm here for. And for everyone else, it makes sense why they did it. It's like everyone else. Oh, bring in a few more people because they see Christian Bale. Show us Christian Bale. <laughs> bring in the os. Bring in the comic book fans yeah. who wanted to see Gore. Bring in the Oscar bitches who were like, oh, Oscar winning Thor's in here. Uh, did he win an Oscar? No. I said Thor. I meant to say Christian Bale. Oh, uh, no, probably. Uh, Zeus did. Russell oh, yeah. Crow, yeah, Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe, yeah. Did you see that he awesome. made that shot, that screenshot from Thor, his uh, profile picture? Yes, I saw that yesterday. Yeah. I'm like, wow, he's excited. Sorry, can you explain what you're talking so about? So there is a picture of him from Thor, like a scene um, where he's pictured as Zeus. He screen capped it and made that his profile picture. On, on Twitter. It's flicking. Oh, on Twitter. Yeah, gotcha. Which was I thought was funny because usually the actors are just like, yeah, it's a picture Whatever. of me, normal. It's not like here's the character I'm playing. Most re-. like it's not like Chris Evans changed his profile picture to Captain America at any point or Lloyd with the stash. But yeah, Danny, but yeah, the, the trailer. I'm sorry. Oh. I mean, the trailer oh, looks lot, lots of fun. I'm curious about based on the trailer. It almost seems like there's going to be a frame narrative with Cord. And I'm curious what that means for what this story is going to be about. Is he going to be talking about, and this is where our mighty Thor exited the mortal plane for blah, 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 blah. He does say Thor say was a Viking god. Or right. Whatever, you know, like- right. So is this leading to his inevitable or his eventual death for uh, Jane to sort of pick up the mantle? Or is it just go, him going to ride off into no. the sunset? Okay. No. Well, is he going to ride so- off into the sun? Oh, my God. Let me finish my point. Actually, that was done. <laughs> well, I was going to say, so they specifically addressed that, that first point. Um, and I think it was YT who said, yeah, I'm sure that's interesting. I don't know what Marvel's plans are, but that's not what this movie is meant to be. Okay. I'm saying it off the top of my head from what I remember the quote being, um, but it's, it's words to that effect. Plus, like Chris Hemsworth says many times that he wants to do Thor for fucking ever, so... Cool. Well, I I'm totally on board with him being Thor for fucking ever because he's awesome as Thor. And no, what's up, Kyle? I was just gonna say, did you guys want the the quote for from Taika yeah. about Thor? Sure. Um, I got it up on oh, wrong screen, but uh, I've got it up here for for everyone to see as as well. It's uh we we stick pretty closely to Jane's storyline and what happened to Jane because oh. that was such an influence on on the film. We're trying to take the best parts of that. <clears throat> And then it goes uh, on. He goes. It's no. It's no longer. It's. Uh, it's no longer his hammer. It's the idea that someone's uh, taking his place. I think a lot of a lot of fans are gonna potentially assume. Oh, okay. This is uh, the passing on of the torch. I'm. I'm not privy to any plans Marvel has for the future, but I don't think that's the case. Taika Wat- Watiti. Okay. Interesting. Um... All right, well, everything I said was fucking stupid, so you can go ahead and nix that. That's why I from the Obviously, rest. that's why I interrupted you. I'm trying to save, yeah, I know. Like, save <laughs> this, this fantastic planet we had. I appreciate it. Uh, so for those of us who are less enlightened, what is Jane's story? 
So it is the story of Chi contracted, contracted. I don't know, is that the right term for cancer? Yeah, contracted, she, yeah. Contracted, she has uh, basically terminal cancer and the hammer turns her into Thor. And it's not Lady Thor, it's not female Thor, it's like Thor. And the only problem is when she uses the hammer and becomes Thor, it accelerates the terminalness of her, of her cancer. And what's kind of interesting about it is that she, she basically goes on to, to be a great hero because of that. And um, oh, there's something I forgot. There's one other aspect of this that I forgot. Is anybody else more read up on it than me? Um, I, all I know is I, I think what Kyle told me, unless I'm mistaken, that she dies in the comics yeah. from cancer. Oh, yeah. And the other thing is, at first, no one knows who she is. So it's interesting to me that he says, oh, it's Jay? pretty close to the story. Yeah. Um, when it's very apparent in, the, in at least in the trailer, it's like no, 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 we're we're getting rid of the secret identity aspect of it. No one knew that it was her at first. Everyone knew, not everyone. Important people knew that she was dying and had cancer, Jane Foster. So that made it even less likely for people to think that it was her. So, amen. So here's a question: Do you think she's going to die in this movie? Hopefully. Jesus Christ. Why? You went right, right to it there. I like, I like drama. I like, I'm a dramatic bitch. I like drama and I like stakes. I want it to mean something. And it gives, it untethers Thor from this world and gives him the ability to leave. So they can end his story here if they wanted to, where he's got nothing keeping him here. His friends are gone. His friends are dead. The love of his life is gone. And it allows him closure. Okay. Mm. Fair enough. How's that, author? Does that work for you? Is that okay? Uh, I mean, sure. I mean, depend. Yeah, we'll see. So, anybody, who has not spoken that would like to speak on this? Speak now for a moment. Jesus. Yeah, I feel like I'm at a wedding. All right, ready to move on? Well, I am drinking, so you are at a wedding. I was going to ask you, what are you drinking? That looks delicious. Yeah. I am drinking bourbon. Ooh. Remember, it's late here. I'm allowed to. Where's it's bourbon o'clock where I am. Where's your cigar? I mean, it's 12 o'clock here, and I'm still drinking, so. What is that? <laughs> is that a Four loco? What are you drinking? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. That's me. Oh, oh, it's a, obviously he's not with his bourbon glass i wouldn't ask him no it's a, a in that glass. it is it is a hazy ipa nice. or juicy ipa mm. sounds gross it's amazing sounds great sounds like it needs an antibiotic mm. all right so we've got one last trailer to discuss before we get on to maybe no, let's just let's just skip that one let's skip that one let's move on you know what? Yeah, we don't need we to. Got, yeah. We got a hard. Remember, one of us has got a hard on in two hours or something, so we have to move on. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So <laughs> let's talk about. Fuck you! <laughs> We're gonna burn this podcast <laughs> to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> gonna light so the we fuse. Got, we finally got. And here's the frustrating thing. I'm gonna say this at the outset. We got a trailer for a movie we're not gonna get for another year because it was in front of Top the Gun. Most frustrating thing. Hmm? Only to be in front of Top Gun. Appreciate like it. that's why like, I'm, I'm like, oh, let's advertise next cruise. Movie. You know what else? You know what why. else was in front of Top Gun? Pause of Fury. I don't know why, but I got a Pause of Fury trailer. I it did. was awful. Well, we got Elvis. Why? I got Elvis. I got that's the new Elvis. Trailer. Trailer. I also, I also got yeah, Elvis. Elvis and Lightyear. Elvis. Anyway, and Lightyear. And Lightyear. And Lightyear. No. Yeah. I did not get no Pause of Fury. Me neither. Stupid. Oh wait, that I did. I the Michael Sarah one. Yeah, the Michael right? Sarah Sam Jackson one. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, it was an animated your... film. It, it's like a B animated film from the looks of it. No, no, Lightyear. I got an A animated film. We got I that got too. Smile. We got Smile. Smile looks awesome based on the five seconds. Yeah, it's the shortest trailer ever. Oh, anyway, so we got. I think the other trailer we got. Oh no, nothing. I know it was the the train trailer. Bullet train. Yes, yes, that too. With the new yeah, trailer for that looks great. <laughs> Yep. Anyway, I wish, I, I wish I'd never gotten it. But yeah. Um, so we've got the new, 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 the only trailer for yeah. Mission Impossible 7 Dead Reckoning. We previously on this Part podcast one. talked about what the uh, title could mean and 
you know, some of us thought it was stupid. Some of us thought it made sense. We'll see what happens next year when this film actually releases. Uh, these films were initially slated for July of 2021 and August of 2022. Um, but obviously for reasons they've been pushed back. I guess the question I have for you guys um, in watching this, as I watched it, I definitely felt like I was watching the beginning of an end. Mm -hmm. And sort of as it relates to Top Gun, do you guys think Ethan's going to die? No. Not in this one. Obviously not in seven. Um, I kind of think like Batman should have in The Dark Knight Rises. Ethan Hunt's a character that would never actually retire. So maybe at the end of the second one, they do a James Bond. Um, but uh, I don't know. And obviously, I fucking love the trailer. It did definitely feel, I mean, I, even when they announced seven and eight, I'm like, oh, they're doing a two part ending to the franchise because crews can't do this forever. Um, sure so I think, so. and even the score, because the score for the trailer was literally written just for the trailer. Um, they haven't actually scored the film. It just, it, it, it's my favorite version of the Mission Impossible theme, and there's almost a melancholy element to it, in addition to like the typical dun 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 dun. Yeah. And I do my I, I could talk about the trailer forever. I'll just say one thing about it. I am they originally they announced Kittredge was returning, bringing mm -hmm. back basically now they brought back every living character from the first film because Max's daughter was in the last one, um, and this one. But I thought he'd be like have a bit part, but he's the one who narrates the trailer and it's so, and there's, they, they don't do crazy Dutch angles like the original, but they have like the super close up on both of them talking to each other. And the action makes me excited, but that was the most exciting part of the trailer. What? That could still be a big part. Maybe poor, he gives the big speech. Poor Himbo, Zendaya and Dune narrated that whole fucking trailer. 10 minutes of screen time. Maybe. True. But I, I thought it was interesting. The focus of the trailer was like to get fans to be like, oh, shit, Kittredge is back from 1996. Because there are so many fans who are saying, oh, shit, Kittredge is back from 1996. I think most Mission Impossible fans. You've never are. seen the upset, bitch. What, what are a Kittredge? Kittredge is the, mm -hmm. the He's guy never who's seen you upset. And they make the cookies in America. Kittredge Farm, isn't that who he is? Actually, my cat's <laughs> name was Kit, and we called him Kittredge, and my family didn't know why, but it was because Mission Impossible. <laughs> so who's that? You just didn't answer my he's, question. Uh, he's the... Wait, the he's, serious. he's like I don't the remember who he is. He was his boss. He was his first boss. Okay, and he's hunting him because he thinks, you know, it's a mole ah. hunt. Ah, shit, didn't ah. think of that. And Ethan hunting hunt. him, get it? But um, uh, no, he's, I thought you were saying you didn't want to spoil it from a movie from 1996. I was like, wait, what? No, no, no. Oh. Um, <laughs> he was laughing at my unintentional yeah, pun. Unintentional pun. But um, so, yeah, no, he was. He, is, I feel like the description you gave of him is like every one of his bosses, except the one and two. Every one of his bosses, like, yeah, he was his boss, and then he had to hunt him. Yeah. That's yeah, but like, he was the best. At, I think. <laughs> um, was he? The no, he was because like, and he was very much front and center. Like, there are lots of scenes with him. All I remember is that when lots of I, Nick, Lawrence Fishburne. Nick and I went to go see uh, the original Mission Impossible. You don't remember Kitchers? That was like last year. Last year, last year, late last year. And I remember watching like, in the theater, watching, be like, Jesus Christ, I forgot how boring this movie fucking is. Are we done yet? Is it over? Oh my God! There's so much just sitting around and nothing happening. Slow. It but is, but I, it's a Brian De Palma thriller, is. not an action yeah. movie. And yeah, it's so fair, but thing. it's still boring. The thing that I remember about Lawrence Fishburne Kill was you. he said, <laughs> I will bleed. He said something like, I will bleed on the American flag to ensure that it stays right. I'm like, God fucking damn. That's hardcore. Yeah, it's hardcore. I was like, that, that's memorable. So I disagree that he's the most, that Kittredge was the most memorable. No, I wouldn't say memorable. It probably has the most scenes of any... Okay. Uh, Okay. And he's not, it's interesting. They're always IMF heads in the later movies, including like starting with Anthony Hopkins and two, but he was just CIA. Yeah. Um, but yeah. The old CIA. Yeah. You know, interesting okay. little note here, random What's your sidebar, name? but What's your sidebar? you can't find the smile trailer online. Uh, that little <laughs> teaser, you can't find it online anywhere. It's only in theaters. Okay. It looks good. 
I think it looks good. I can't tell anything about it yet. <laughs> Teaser, Nick. I mean, it looks like an M. Like, is it Joker film. 2? Is this Joker 2? <laughs> no. So essentially what it was, for those of you who haven't seen, it was a little teaser where a woman in a hospital walks by a door uh, in the hospital and there's a man sitting on the on the bed smiling and she stops and looks, goes back at him and then she goes up to him and like waves a hand in front of the face, snaps in front of his face and he just has a smile that is like, pain this like you could tell like the muscle the way it's spasming that it's just being held forcefully and then it's just a smile and then it shows like another clip of another lady smiling and it's really creepy and it has like that violin <laughs> sound and then it cuts to cuts the, to black the horror the typical end of a horror trailer the typical the typical the the Vavitch violin sort yeah. of thing going on there uh and it looks good i think it looks good you should see looks it good. If you, interesting like that you it's reviewed that concept. instead of Mission Impossible. Oh yeah, that looks all right. <laughs> I've seen it over fifty times, and I think to the, the fine to the first part you asked, where you think if you think it's final or not, I think Isla Faust is going to die in this one, based Who's on what we see in the trailer. Uh, the main woman in the last two. Um, okay. Oh, Rebecca Ferguson. Yeah, Rebecca Ferguson's character. It looks I very finite for her. She, there's multiple. St- yeah, there's literally a scene where she's wearing an eye patch. I think she lost an eye in the sword fight she's earlier. Using a rifle, maybe. Yeah, but you close an eye. You don't have to wear a fucking. You're not like you carry around an eye patch. It's just like, oh, I have to use a sniper rifle. Speaking <laughs> of eye patches and sniper rifles, I got some minor Metal Gear Solid vibes from this trailer. Maybe it's just the dustiness. Maybe you it's know, the eye patch. Say that. David Hader literally liked one of my tweets. Just nice. Just, oh. Sweet. But it, like? I, I called him out in it. So getting, <laughs> if we get into Top Gun, there was a scene where there's a helicopter. If you guys remember the first game, there was a high D helicopter. And Snake is like, a high D. And so I'm watching the movie Top Gun. I'm like, hey, it's a high D. And so that, <laughs> I tweeted that dude. He was like, cool. <laughs> Nice. He was not involved in the making of Top Gun, right? No, because I know he's a writer. I mean, it was a high D. I'm sorry, a high D. <laughs> so I feel like probably yes, but also no. Also no. <laughs> also no. So yeah, the movie looks good. Um, it looks it looks like it looks it looks like a Mission Impossible movie. I feel like you can't say that it looks good from like the thing that you did. I, I maybe I have to see. It. Are we talking about Mission Impossible? I'm Smile. talking about Mission Impossible. No, I'm talking oh, about. Mission, I moved on. I moved on to the actual. You topic. moved on. Okay, you moved on. Okay. Now the actual topic, uh, it looks good. It looks you like every other Mission Impossible movie. I don't know because it's called Part One. No, I mean these two being the finale. I was uh, talking to a friend and they did the same qualification. I was like, "Yeah, it looks like will an be. ending." She was like, "The they beginning will be. of an ending." I was like, "They will okay. be. They will be until they decide not to be. They will be in the same sense that FF, not FF, Fast and Furious Eight was." the first film in the trilogy that will end the series in that it is Until not, it and it will just keep going. It will die when Tom Cruise dies. Or even like, that, uh, yeah. Cruise will die when Tom Cruise dies. <laughs> no, no. It, Mission Impossible will <laughs> die when Tom live Cruise dies. Them. No, it won't. Uh, and the uh, yeah, no, I'm talking I'm about Fast and the Furious will outlive Tom Cruise. That's what I meant. Quick, somebody figure out when Mission Impossible enters the public domain so we can start on the screen. <laughs> was it the what was it, the eighties or the seventies when it was when it came out as a TV show? So we got another 70s. solid uh, while we, we got a good we got a hot minute. I think the word the Earth will be expired by then, so mm. I don't think it'll ever happen. I'll be expired by then. So I'm definitely gonna be expired. Not worth living in I'm a world without Tom Cruise or Ethan Hunt. God damn it! I'm Nick. just kidding. I'm just. <laughs> Did Danny, you, did, your thoughts. Hmm? <laughs> On what? Mission Impossible. <laughs> the trailer. Is Ethan Hunt going to die? No. No. Okay. <laughs> but I do think. I do think. I do think one of the uh, the supporting cast will. I think that's going to be one of the catalysts to make the the a more of a dramatic second film. So uh, Sarah Ferguson's alert. character. Yeah, I think one of those is going to go. But I don't think Tom Cruise is die. I think. The Mission Impossible films are a little bit less, for want of a better word, serious than the James Bond films. So oh, I yeah. don't think they need to have a dramatic ending for Tom Cruise for Ethan Hunt to die. So I don't think he will die. 
it's more likely to retire but not retire as we were just as you guys were just talking i think it's more likely to end that way but no he won't die did you guys ever watch the shield no yes mm-hmm. Need- i that just remember just- Go on. Yes. I had a spoilers for a show that ended 10 years ago. Danny, yeah. you remember like at the very end, they stuck him in a corner and he was not yep. retired, but like he wasn't supposed to be doing anything. And like he looks out. No, they pretty much gave him that office job that people always get yeah. threatened with in, in cop yes. shows, don't they? Well, I'll have you behind a desk for the rest of your career, that kind of now thing. Now he's at a desk. And yeah. in the city, like you can hear sirens, you can hear stuff going on. He reaches in the bag, pulls out a gun, and then walks out the door to like, go do whatever the fuck Vic Mackey does. And I feel like that would be an appropriate end for him. It's like, you're yeah. retired, you're, you're at the desk, and it's like, I gotta go do a thing. But bad guys are still doing bad stuff, and I'm gonna go out there and protect the world. Yeah. My city needs I, me. I wanna make you feel older and just say that that show ended 14 years ago, not 10 years ago. Holy shit. Wow, yeah. This is not yeah. like the, tw- the 20 year avatar comment from... <laughs> Yeah, that's it's what been worried. 84 <laughs> years. <laughs> when Avatar came out, Jammer had all of his hair was dark. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, <coughs> Jonesy? So you're, so you're saying last week is when it came out, apparently, based on what everyone is saying. <laughs> my hair. No, it reminds me last year uh, I saw somebody who I hadn't seen in like two years and they looked at me and they're like, holy shit, what happened? That literally was their first <laughs> comment because they saw my hair. I was like, Jesus. <laughs> this is so bad. Like, like, I feel like that's the only, like, I can't even talk about you like this. No, no, my hair is, is, is yeah, my hair is, I mean, but you, you got the, it looks, it looks shaved. It looks intentional. So, you know, we'll go with that. Oh shit. That's because I have shots doctors, fired. Right? They shaved my head well. That's mm. What's that, Nick? He said shots fired. Shots fired. That's not. I gave him a compliment. All right. Let's go into the danger zone. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about Mission Impossible. I didn't do the thing. I should have done the thing. I've been having a good time. Do the thing. Mission Impossible, I'm sure, has or um Top Gun has probably really great, <laughs> really great reviews so far based on what Here, I Here it has sorry, Top it's Gun. It's got a ninety seven percent on Rotten Tomatoes from the critics Fuck and yeah. a ninety nine percent from the audience. Fuck you. Yeah. We have yeah. a core. Fucking finally. Uh, everybody seems to like this film. Um this is the film about after more than 30 years of service as one of the Navy's top aviators, Pete Maverick Mitchell is where he belongs, pushing the envelope as a courageous test pilot and dodging the advancement in rank that will ground him. Training a detachment of graduates for a special assignment, Maverick must confront the ghosts of his past and his deepest fears, culminating in a mission that demands the ultimate sacrifice from those who would choose to fly it. And it's very interesting that that's where they end that uh, description because that's exactly the problem that I had with the movie, such as it was. Um, what does that mean? So my non-spoiler impressions of this film was that it was good, it could have been great. And I walked, I got to a point in the movie where I was like, this is definitely an A-plus movie. And something happened and I was like, it's now a B-plus or any minus. Um, and we'll get into why a little bit later, but it's really, really, it's, it's fun. It's really good. I think that anybody that is a fan of this series or a fan of Tom, Tom Cruise would absolutely dig this film. And I think that the thing that bothers me about the film is germane to me. I'm being persnickety. So. Who wants to I this? loved it. I absolutely no. loved it. Not, well, that's the thing. I don't even like the first one. Like, I have no interest in the first one. Well, you only like Tom Cruise after 2000, so. That's not true at all. Uh, but, minus um, Mission Impossible. That's an exception. But, yeah. No, it wasn't even Tom Cruise. I think, well, my non-spoiler review is I feel like it's the first amazing sequel we've gotten to an 80s movie. Like, you know, I call them delayed sequels, but like Star Wars, eh, uh, Die Hard, nah, not the same as the original. Indiana Jones, absolutely not. And this was like, I mean, obviously I'm biased now. I don't even like the first one that much. But this movie could also stand on its own as just a fantastic, like, even, it's it's not just Tom Cruise, though, of course, Tom Cruise gets to act more in this than Mission Impossible. Like, you know, Tears, 
and stuff like that. And he's really good at that, even though it's obviously a Tom Cruise character. It's not like some of his other movies. Um, but yeah, my the crowd was is a 4 p.m. in the afternoon screening. I have not had a movie theater experience. It was more people were more excited than uh, when I saw Spider-Man opening night. Like people were laughing at all the jokes and like clapping and like it was really the fun. Theater. What was that? <laughs> so I feel like this was with you. Probably, but I go um, to Alma Draft so House. When let they me ask you something. Well, no, I know what you would say. I was going to say even more so than um, Jurassic Park, but I don't think that's quite as delayed. No, and that was kind of the joke I made. I meant to put it on Twitter, but it was in my head where uh, I was like, and because like Mission Impossible is one of the only other franchises I can think of where the sequels are better than the original also. Um, and I was like, oh, so just hire McQuarrie and Tom Cruise and you'll accomplish that impossible feat of making a fantastic delayed sequel. What about Ghostbusters um, 2016's Runaway Hit? No. A Ghost after, the Ghostbusters Afterlife was one of the other ones I thought of where I feel like that's a better sequel than any of the Star Wars sequels or... Jurassic World, or um, and Kyle doesn't agree, so I won't go any farther in. Or like you know, I love Indiana Jones Four. Don't it's, let his it's East fun. West deter you. You fucking talk, Nick. I love. I mean, I like Don't Indiana Jones Four a lot, but again, it's like this movie was like, oh, this stands on its own if it needs to. It's fantastically written and acted, and it just if it, definite A plus for me. Even okay. I, because I feel the opposite about of you about what we're going to discuss later it brought you down. So, so oh, you know me, what I'm going to say? I think, I think so. Okay. I think we'll find out. So, I, I thought this movie was way better than it had any business being for sure. Um, it was very interesting on a couple of levels. So if I were to give, if I were to give a one word description of this movie, it would be full. Um, everything about it just felt very full in terms of like the filming, uh, the way it was done, the fact that it was done practical. There was like a fullness to it that I feel like is sometimes lacking a lot of movies. Both and then, and then as far as the story goes, it's a very very simple story. It is an almost annoyingly cliched story. Almost like you've um, seen it before. Almost like I've seen it before, but maybe from a slightly different perspective. And in the um, galaxy far, far away. Anyway, uh, it was very cliche to lean into everything, but even though it pretty much hit every cliche, it was really padded out by a lot of just slower moments of getting to know the characters, getting to care about every everyone and everything that was going on, that it just it just made me feel good in my heart. And mm-hmm. it it was just a lot of fun to watch um, from beginning to end. And I would probably give it a, probably an A minus. I think the cliches are, they're not a bad thing. It, to, if anything, it definitely highlights to me like why cliches work. You know, they just, they just do when they're executed well, they like work superb. Um, but I just wish there was just a smidge more creativity. I wish the scope was a bit, a bit more, a bit wider in the actual story. Cause it literally is just building up to a mission and then the mission and that's it nothing else really that that is that is the plot of the story um and I, I i feel like i wanted just a little bit more but at the same time i can't complain that given that parameters they managed to do a lot with the very little that they covered especially given what the first one was i don't remember the first one i watched it 20 what? years ago and i was just like yeah, it was all right and then i never watched it again I so I, I don't remember it's not a bad thing. I didn't. I said I love it, even with all of its homoeroticism. Like, well, oh, you make it sound like it's a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. No, but it's very blatant. Like there was a point where I was like, "You guys should just kiss, like Maverick." And obviously, I just, just tongue, tongue first. With like the locker room scene where he's like, "You're dangerous." That's right. And they're like, they're biting <laughs> at each other. I'm like, the fuck? <laughs> we, we doing this? We doing this right here, right now? Okay. Yeah, I guess it really just shows when you could just if you you could just role play with your significant other a specific scene. It just really shows that there's a lot of tension there. Lots of guys Yeah. <laughs> so, what did you think, Danny? 
Yeah, Danny, why are you fingering me? What the fuck? <laughs> he was getting like. I started I was... it. I thought that's how we did things now, but we fingered each other. Yeah, I'm now trying to figure out why you're doing well, it. I, I thought the allusions to Star Wars were like the trench runner, very obvious. Oh, I, I, all I could think was was womp rats. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Oh, so, yeah. I don't understand yeah. why you're doing the finger, but go ahead. You go ahead. I'm just surprised no one in the movie said that because they would have lived through Star Wars, right? I mean, obviously, maybe a different universe. Um, I can't say anything um, better than what, what Jammer did. I, I thought all of the things that they managed to put together in a sequel that no one really thought we wanted until we got this film and like, holy fucking shit, they did a great job. All the cliches were there or are there, and yet it somehow managed to work and it worked fantastically. I think the long wait actually helped this film because I think it did allow some deeper character moments because it's been 30 years. So we things have happened to them in their lives rather than rushing out a sequel, which they could have done back in the day. Um, so I think all things were aligned for this to be a success, but they had to they had to they had to nail it. They had to get the writers and the talent, and they really did do a great job of pulling it off. I think it's what happens when you have people that really care about the characters and you have a good writing team behind them. Uh, and uh, and the second thing I'll add to that is that I'm glad they waited to release it onto the big screen because it definitely has to be fucking seen. Mm -hmm. I saw an IMAX, I saw it two days running. I saw it today as well as yesterday. And it's fucking immense with a great sound system and that big screen. Before we go into the whole spoiler stuff, it really does make it a really good event film, which is why it elevates it to an A for me, this one. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, 100%. So you guys ready to get into spoilers? Yeah. Give us your grade. You you said B oh, plus, yeah. A minus. Yeah. What are you settling on? B plus. I'm going to stick with an A minus okay. only because I I think it's really really good and I'll explain the thing that knocked it down in spoilers so we can get into now. Okay. All right. Yeah. Give cool. That, that's your let's one. let's talk spoilers. Uh, spoilers. Go for it. The biggest thing that bothered me was I think he should have died. Um, Same. I what frustrated me was I felt like they were building towards an emotional crescendo with that. And it immediately, when he woke up on the mountain and the helicopter started chasing him, it regressed into a campiness that exists. It was weird. So I saw this at Alamo and they started showing uh, Iron Eagle. It felt very Iron Eagle in that moment where he runs from the helicopter, then the rooster has to come save him, and the rooster gets shot down. And it's like, all right, how are we gonna get Maverick in an F-14 Tomcat? Okay, we figured out a way to do it. Now what's gonna happen? He's gonna and it, it just it's not bad. And it has do you the, think it almost the, felt like a different film or that that was yes. tagged on at some point? It Here's did, didn't it? I, I mean, I'm not saying it took me out, but it felt different. It whole thing agree. felt oh, let's add these extra 20 minutes. It felt a lot more like mission impossible. I felt that somebody wrote a version of this movie where he dies. And then, like we were talking about before, like Jenna brought up, Tom Cruise walked in and was like, no, no. And they changed it based on that because you kept getting these moments of like Rooster and him. And he's like, oh, let's, I'll tell you later, we'll talk. And then his warrant officer is having a conversation. It's been an honor. Like they're they're giving you all of this shit. He's he's in his he's in his white uniform. I almost said something from a few good men. God damn. Um, he's in his <laughs> white uniform in a few good men, and she's hugging him. And so you're 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 mentally preparing for this thing. And it, to some extent, this is my fault because, and this isn't a joyous thing, but expectations of the people joy. You got to let the movie play out the way that it's going to. But also, I think the movie was telegraphing something that didn't come to fruition. And not only yep. did they telegraph something that didn't come to fruition, it got incredibly cheesy. They played it so straight up until that point. It would have looked yep. ridiculous for Tom Cruise to have been in the bar scene, like as young Tom Cruise singing the song and all that stuff. But the way they did it was fantastic. He's a guy on the outside. That's not him anymore. Right. He's the older guy watching these young folks. And I thought I love that scene because it was so self-aware of where he was in his life versus these people. And to go from being so self-aware there to jumping to this Iron Eagle stuff 
where he's stealing an F-14 Tomcat from it just it felt out of place only for the movie that I had been watching up until that moment. Yeah, I'll say was, yeah, and do, yeah. Yeah. There was a point, there was a point where they could have almost almost done it again, but then I think it would have been, ah, we're gonna get you again when they when they go into the steep climb just yeah. before Hangman saves them. And that could have been the point where Goose did, uh, Rooster did eject, but <laughs> Maverick didn't. And that would have right. been a complete flip right. to the first film. But because they'd done that, done that whole switcheroo 15 minutes earlier, we would have gone, oh, he's going to die. Or oh, he's probably not, though, is he? Because they right. we thought he died 10 minutes ago. So it, it was a little bit where you had your opportunity to do that and you missed it, and then you thought you could do it again, but you can't do it again because we won't believe you, the boy who cried wolf kind of thing. And it's like, <laughs> it did feel a little disjointed. But even that, saying that, I, I think we've all agreed, we've all said A's, it didn't really stop it being a great film, yeah. but it certainly felt different. It certainly I felt think, a uh, disjointed. And, and I think it, moment, it, it did sorry. have its... It did have its benefits, though. You know, like it was able to fully round out the relationship between mm-hmm. Rooster and him. Yes. It also yeah. allowed Hangman to get his his moment as well, because we were all waiting for it. Like, hey, man, you got On you got to yeah. you got to not leave them <laughs> out to dry at some point. I was expecting that, though. Yeah. Exactly. So like, like, when they're had, like, oh no, we're screwed. It's like, of course, Hangman's going to show up in a jet. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, so it's like those those payoffs going into the cliche. There, you know, they they thematically and from a storytelling perspective round things out in a way that him just dying would not have of course you could have made a version where yeah, those so things were rounded it. out you, you could have done it but i mean as it stood like i think i think it worked and it i think to me the having not that much remembrance of the original movie the movie that we got didn't seem to be building up to a death it seemed too lighthearted for that i thought personally. the sacrifice was going to be real um well but i was i w- did not mind that the movie kept going like literally nobody well, here, died well, in this movie so here's which is so crazy that's the thing and that's what i mean when i said i read that description it said the ultimate sac- no one made an ultimate sacrifice and so it's very weird to me that they're saying that someone that they're going to make the ultimate and no one does well both of them tried they're willing to sacrifice themselves speed. that's no, marketing speed no 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 and I hear what you're saying, but ultimate sacrifice means a very specific thing, especially mm-hmm. in the context of the military. And so that's where I would disagree. And yeah. I'm not upset about it. It is annoying, especially having read it after the fact and feeling mm-hmm. how I felt like we're building up to this thing. They've written it and it also doesn't happen. Yeah. I don't need someone to die to make this movie work better. But I also felt like they were showing me something that didn't happen, but also they're yeah. marketing it as though it does. Yeah. Ultimate yeah. sacrifice, it, it, it means a thing. And they mentioned so, it a couple of times. No one's coming. Someone's not going to make it back. This is a, you know, even the Admiral was saying, well, ultimately, I don't think any of them are coming back. That's why I don't care that they fly above 100 feet, that kind of thing. Right. He was like, yeah, you know. That yeah. this mission will succeed only because um, they'll blow up the base, not getting everybody back home. Um, yeah, I, but ultimately, I think we all seem to really enjoy it. On a more light-hearted, slight quibble, did no one forget to mention that there was a bridge in that ravine when they were going through? The, uh, <laughs> That's so weird. Because they were around the corner. Oh fuck a bridge! I'm like, well, you didn't do your recall. And every well. character is like, what the fuck? Well, here's the thing: <laughs> yes. we don't. We don't know what country this is. It's it's a nameless it's country. A we, we don't it's see around. we don't see any country. We don't see any. It could be North Korea for all we know, where we literally don't have any maps of anything. So we don't fucking. No, they had a map. Korea. It's it's called satellite. satellite. They had a fucking map. Oh my god! Two, two, Shut up, you guys! I'm trying to defend this movie. <laughs> here's here's <laughs> called satellite <laughs> imagery. The reason why I know it's not North Korea is because it's, this movie is funded by China. No, it's not, not North Korea. Korea. I I didn't mean North Korea. I just mean like North Korea ish, in that we know nothing. We we don't. Google Maps doesn't show shit on it. In the it. movie, we call this that. a trope. Oh, I'm sorry, in the military, we call this a trope. Right? We have <laughs> we have two countries, like warring countries, that we always refer to, and like it's it's a trope. Like it's I just amazing. I wouldn't place. be surprised if it was written and even shot for them saying Russia at some point, but they cut that out to so people be, have some more escapism. Kind of like the Stranger Things warning. Tencent came in and was like. Hey, that Taiwan patch on Maverick's jacket, you're taking that off. It's not going to be Russia. 
Mm. That's how deep China is involved. I sound like a fucking conspiracy theorist. <laughs> Follow the is. money. Follow the money. But it's, <laughs> true, right? it's 100 percent true. He had a Taiwan patch on his jacket from the missions that his father flew in the first one. That's gone in this one. Um, and it, it has 100 percent to do with who's creating this movie. Yeah, I now, believe I, you. I, I just you did sound crazy though. I do I did I fucking sound crazy. <laughs> Um, I, I, it, I don't want to make it sound like I did not like this movie because I'm giving it an A, but I'm talking about all the things that I thought it was funny. I thought the action was great. Um, to Jammer's point about even though I didn't like the part that we, I did not like the way I felt when they did the switcheroo or the, the I don't even call it a fake death, the fake out. I love the scene where he says to him, he's like, what are you doing? What are you thinking? He's like, you told me not to think. Yes. And he's like, Ugh. fuck. And that was so good. And so it's, I, I didn't like it, but I also loved it. Because like you said, we, we got to see these characters be rounded out. Um, we got that moment, didn't we? Way. They did the fake out, but without, without the fake out, we wouldn't have got that moment, which, right. which I enjoyed too. His body language afterwards where he went, you got nothing? <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, no, I agree. That was really good. Like they just I love that they just sat in that moment, kind of strange. And it was just it was funny. It was good. It told me not to think. I've got it. So when I go to Alamo, I've started writing on their order cards using my notes. I noticed that the Batman. Yeah. I did that too because useful. I saw you were. <laughs> it's useful. Well, something fun. really stupid about the order cards at Alamo Draft House. Literally What's yesterday I, I discovered I've been using them wrong. Yes, the wrong slot. That- no, oh. I've been using them. I've been using them wrong in terms of I didn't realize one side of them had order, and then you write there. I've been writing them on the back for years. I don't think it matters. <laughs> I know it doesn't matter, so but wait, it's so weird. There are words all over. I didn't see. I didn't. I've that. never. I've never <laughs> noticed those words. I've never noticed them. I don't think we have those at ours. I think one side is blank. No, wait, one side, one side is blank, but the other yeah, side. Yeah, but on his, order. he's saying what the back of the card he just showed has like oh, the yeah. instructions. Yeah, I don't think we have works. that. Oh, no, the other side of ours is blank. Yeah. Interesting. I don't think it matters in the case where. You no, it really it's, doesn't it's matter. But I just felt stupid because I'm like, have these been this like this the whole time? And Kirsten was like, yeah. I'm like, oh. Shit, I, <laughs> I thought there were I've blank ri- pieces of paper. I've, I've been writing on the back. Each and every time. Every time um, the server is like, what the fuck? Who is this guy? It's like, who is this guy? Why is he yeah. doing that? I've got three more things I want to talk about with this movie. And then I, you guys can, or maybe four. And then you guys can talk. And then we can close it out. Because I know Kyle has a heart out. One of the things <laughs> that made me laugh super hard was uh, where the warrant says, all funny games and that selfie. So you have to do push-ups. That's I laughed so hard at that. Um, I really love the scene with Val Kilmer. Really well done. Really good. Um, the I, I've already talked about the Star Wars thing, so I'm going to skip that. I don't think anybody gave a good explanation for why they couldn't use drones for this. Because they need that, people. Yeah. Because oh. it, it would go against the theme of the whole movie, Jonesy. I know. Which that's is funny. Why. It's funny that Kyle is wearing that shirt. I can't tell if that's a Macross shirt. There is a Macross movie that is the exact plot of a lot of this, where it's like drones versus humans in the plane. It's uh, Macross Plus. And they play a lot of that against each other. So it's very interesting. That, um, it's not about the that. vehicles who's in it. Yeah, yeah, same thing. And yeah, I enjoyed the Hans Zimmer ness of this. <sighs> they wrote That's Danger it. Zone like into the theme itself yeah. at parts. It was yeah, so Hans cool. Zimmer. You, you get your money's worth with that. Dude. You know, I really, one thing I, I wish, I think I wanted a bit more of this. This movie was very much from the perspective of Tom Cruise to the detriment of the character building of the different pilots. And I think as a result, we don't get as much as I would have liked between the pilots. We only kind of get what he observes. And I wish that there was. I almost wish it was from the perspective of a younger person, just so we can get those more in-depth interactions there. So His name is in the title. Maverick. Yeah, I know. No, I get it, other. but I'm just saying. I, I just saying. I, I would have liked more character development from the other characters. Do you remember that time we were watching James Bond and Danny was like, "There are people out there that are upset that there there wasn't more of these other characters." That's what you sound like right now. 
Like, I don't, whatever, man. Why couldn't I have gotten more hangman? I think this is where's my payback. I prefer this because otherwise it is more, even uh, more like forest awakens where it's like some perspective from the kids, you know, whereas like this one's like, no, it's still the same perspective. It's just, you still get to see younger characters grow. (laughs) You guys can all just go to hell. So, um, Oh, here's the other thing that I thought was very interesting. I remember when I knew that Rooster was Goose's son, I immediately was like doing math. I was like, this math doesn't work. No. And they very specifically were like, oh no, there's a plot reason why this math does work. And I was like, that's cool. I like that. Um, how, wait, how, why, is it because he's older than he should be? He's, I assume he is the age that he should be, but there's a scene or a couple of scenes where you talk about the fact that he pulled his papers from the military academy. Mm-hmm. Mm. If, in, I can't remember what year this came out. He would be about my age and it would be weird for him to be doing that at that rank at my age. I'm older than I should be to do what I do now. I should technically be further along in my career. And so they did the same thing. And it was because I did other things before I came into the military. Same thing with him. He was four years behind. And so he's about the age that he actually should be. I find that to be fascinating mm-hmm. that they actually went in and were like, we need a reason for why this kid that we should. He's not that old. He's, he's not like 35. That old. He's 35. That works old. enough in the universe, even though it's been it more works. years. Yeah. yeah. I think it is designed to, I think they did a good job giving explanation for that. That's yeah, I agree. I, I think it was great. Like, cause I wondered too, I, I was thought I was like, does he really hold it against him that his dad died? Cause that's what the trailers gave the impression mm-hmm. of that. And I like that twist because, in the movie. And it has to do no, it's because he pulled his papers, which is a result of his dad dying, which is like, that's really great. Like all that stuff was, was really awesome. The way it played out. I love um, the line course. about, um, he's like, why would I like, whereas his mom uh, told him to do it. I uh, told Cruz to do it. And he's like, why would I tell him that he'd resent both of us? Yeah. yeah that was great like i feel like i forgot which of you said it it's like they somebody said that they really care about these characters they just did a really good job Danny. like i 100 percent. they gave people good motivations and backstory and while we didn't get a lot from the other pilots like it was an, it was just enough where those emotional moments held weight and I could talk about this movie all day. It's like Mission Impossible trailer, but I'll just bring up one thing. Obviously, having real jets, you know, that insistence that Tom Cruise makes on these kind of things makes all the difference. It makes it just those feel realer and fighters, heavier. Real, what? Fifth generation fighters. No, I'm talking about the the, I'm the just, I'm yeah, I'm like and especially like when you see Tom Cruise like hit like ten G's. Yeah. And like, not in the first scene, but like in a normal airplane, and his face is just like, yep. and all of them, they did, they, I mean, not everyone flew all of their own jets, and obviously Tom Cruise didn't fly every time they showed his jet. It just happened probably in a few scenes, hit and G's, but all of them, I remember, were forced to do this at least beyond camera hitting like that much, and they're all right. like, it makes a huge difference. Um, and I assume all of us had this. I liked that there was an introduction at the beginning from tom cruise where he's like you know we make this shit for you guys thanks for coming to the movies oh, no you didn't have that maybe it was an alamo draft house no no no. you, you said we, we all like that i thought you were referring to the opening which was exactly the same oh that was amazing no i'm just saying I like, I like that yeah i like that too but i i just was kind of appreciative that he tom cruise did an intro where he's like because that's his always been his thing where he's like i make these movies for you guys I like, like that i jump off a cliff on a motorcycle. For yeah, you guys. I don't. I don't care about that. But I. I will say he looks significantly older in that yes. introduction than he does in the movie. Which so. is funny because they're still shooting Mission magic. Impossible Eight. Soft lenses. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm sure they. It looks like he wasn't wearing makeup or something. Like he just like was like, oh, do you want to shoot this? And he's like, yeah, sure. I'm not gonna go and sit in the makeup chair for it. Because yeah. how old is he now? He's like 62. He's 87. I think so, so Harrison Ford. I think I think he's 59 or 58 or something. So my friend that I went to see it with, he was like, oh yeah, that looks like a six-year-old man. 
<laughs> yeah, he definitely does in the intro thing. <laughs> yeah, 50, 59. You quiet as ever behavior, you just have nothing else to say. I remember I no, looked it up I'll because be I wanted to see the age difference between him and Jennifer Connelly because I was like, how much of an age difference is there? Because I don't remember why, but it's like she's 51. He's 59. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's relatively appropriate. Yeah. I did like that. Surprising. I don't know if you guys saw it. Then someone posted on the on the on the, the site today that uh, Jennifer Connelly's character is the admiral's daughter that he had a fling with in the first film. Is that true? That's what she says. Do you remember the first film has got the yeah. role where Maverick was doing some crazy shit and one of them was had a fling with an admiral's daughter? Well, obviously, yeah. uh, Maverick and Penny have a history and we don't know what that is. It's been 30 years, but the history goes back a bit longer than that, back to when pre-Top Gun. Uh, and I thought that was a nice little touch. Again, I think it shows that I they cared about the true. characters. It's not just some random woman that we've expected to think that he's known a few years, but no, well, he had a fling with her many years ago and subsequently so a couple more times. I the think. line from the movie is when they first see each other again, he says something like, I pissed off an admiral. She's like, oh, really? There you go. Again. Yeah, she says one, like, again, like, yeah, that's you. Like, that would make perfect sense. That's awesome. And it does now. It does, and it's great, isn't it? Because just another little touch. Of, okay, well, they've got history. Now I now I know that that character more, even though I have fucking no idea about that character. But now that's a great little touch. Um, so, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. It is pretty cool. Wait, that so that's Jennifer. even weirder. So, like, if if he was in his 20s, how ooh, ooh. Well, how, how what was the age difference back then? It's a little, it's a little more significant. He was in so his 20s. It depends on... So you're talking about real life age versus I know I'm age just age not, yeah I know okay. I know I did, I really don't take it seriously I was a, it was a joke Jonesy I don't know like like you they can't all be winners <laughs> Oof well unlike you like you like well, <laughs> like you anyway, unlike you I'm wound, I'm I'm severely wounded I'm <laughs> um, <laughs> Do you guys have anything? We're definitely in the danger zone. Do we have anything else to say about this movie? A lot, but I'm not going to because we need to wrap it up. <laughs> wrap it up. And I yeah. think I, I covered I'm my doing. piece. Okay. So uh, hold on, one, one more thing. So Nick, is this better than Doctor Strange Two or the yeah. same? Because you gave it some better so what and fuck? Spider Man. Because I give it an A plus, I can give you, you those gave, an A plus. You need you need to be a little little more judicious about those A pluses, sir. Because <laughs> but you know what. <laughs> You know what? 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 There's like five, like there are different levels of A between A minus. Like let's say there's a hundred questions on a test. Like an A can be like either a 97 or like a 93. Yeah, but you're giving out A pluses. You're giving out a hundred pluses. I remember I'm easy to please. We've had this conversation. That's what makes my life so great. Plus is like a 98, 99 or a hundred. Yeah. And like, I mean, it basically has an A plus from Rotten Tomatoes. I know they don't give everything I see an A plus, but no, a, a plus is a hundred plus <laughs> in my mind. No, no. in my <laughs> mind, <laughs> that's, that's that's extra credit. It doesn't count towards a letter grade. <laughs> Anything else? No, loved it. All right, agreed. So, dear listener, if you like what you heard, do all the socials: like, rate, comment, subscribe, share. We would definitely appreciate. It. Also, LRM has other great content for you. Where else but on the Genre Podcast Network as Genreverse. Well as, what did I say? Genre. I thought it said Genreverse. I'm sorry, Genreverse Podcast Network as well as LRMonline.com. Also, we've got Discord. Jump on there and let us know what you thought of Top Gun Maverick or any of the news stories that we covered today. Other than that, Jam where can be found. You can find me on Twitter at Jam the Writer and all of my books under the name AJ Cerna on Amazon and Audible. Dan, where can you find? Uh, you can find me in the kitchen getting another scotch. <laughs> nice. That was bourbon. Uh, yeah, sorry, bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> Liar! If I'm out of bourbon, I'll get a scotch. <laughs> this is, you know that song, One Bourbon, One Scotch, One Beer? Have you heard that? Yeah. George yeah, Thorogood. Yeah, nice. There's also a um, John Lee Hooker version. I like that one. Nick Doll, where can you be found? I'm at Geeky Nick Doll on Twitter. I do Marvel Multiverse Mayhem with Kyle. And I'm always here. I'm not always. Obviously, all of us miss a lot. Uh, I'm usually here on Breaking the Creator of the Podcast. 
And you'll hear more often than the rest of us, I think. Lately, oh. I have some stuff coming up, though. <laughs> or maybe Jonesy. And you can find me on the website as well as in the Discord. And of course, right here on Breaking Geek Radio, the podcast. Is that Kate Church? Who is that? Who's waving at me? No, he's waving goodbye because the show's almost over. This is Harry Osborne. Kittridge is dead. <laughs> Good Jesus. <laughs> he was my childhood cat. And on a high note. <laughs> and on a happy hey, note. Kyle's on the one and twos. And folks, as always, thanks for listening. We will catch you on the next one. Hasta lasagna. Okay, Nianya. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished.